So, you know, overall, my experience with boards, overall, has been positive. Right. Has been positive. No, my questions are not directed at blaming the boards. No, no. It's how the mechanism works and why the string of pearls has lost its potency through whose ever fault, but it has. Um, they do not shine with a the luminosity they shone no, they with don't. 20 years ago. They and don't. I don't know why that is. Whether storytelling, the performing storytelling arts within the broader culture belongs now through the barrel of the lens and through mm -hmm. the Blu-rays that you rent, yeah. uh, or whether we've just been eclipsed by the spectacular taste and storytelling that's gone on, or I, I, I don't yeah. know. No, I know I it's alive and well in the niches, in the tarragon niche, with its audiences, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they keep that on a path, and Richard does incredibly well, but on the, in the broader part of storytelling, and you could say, is that why there's more reality TV and survivor adventure shows on television and less large miniseries about the next Guy Vanderhaeg's book? I mean, is that the same question? Is it the broader public that's lost an ambitious taste for adventurous narrative on the large scale from our theaters? Well, I don't think it helps if you look at what's happened to the education system over the last 20 years. You know, I know in New Brunswick, you don't have music teachers anymore. You don't have drama teachers anymore. You know, all of that stuff that used to feed in yep. to imagination. Gone. That's why now you get <laughs> virtually all the theater companies have schools now, not professional pre-professional, but just schools for the kids for doing that. Nobody else is doing it, and it becomes a business for these theater companies. Mm -hmm. And no, I mean, what keeps TMP going? They've got schools that will do you from four up to 20, and they'll do a major musical at the end of the season, you know, run it for six, seven nights. Every parent, grandparent, and friend is coming out. They make money on these things. So, yeah, I think it is part of a broader cultural thing in terms of, of uh, where we go with our education. But I come back to the fact that I do think there is a drain of energy in keeping those elephants, <laughs> let's okay. forget the pearls, in keeping those elephants afloat. I think there is a real drain of energy. And also, they inside the business, from the point of view of the other, other groups, what levels they seem to take and drain so much resource overall I'll give you an example of my you mean a disproportionate a amount disproportionate of the amount public funding of the funding the that's available provincial yeah. federal yeah. city when I went to the council I loved my four years of the council I had a good time there were and I said so uh, how do we do the budget here I beg your pardon? Well, uh, how do we do the budget? <laughs> you know, we got so direct, Walter. Right? Yeah, we got this. we got this ten or eleven, twelve million dollars at this point. How do we do the budget? Oh, they said, well, a uh, uh, million dollar goes to the National Theatre School, a million dollar goes to Stratford, a uh, half million goes to such and such. I said, well, uh, don't we? Uh, isn't there? Any, I mean, these these are the large institutions. Is that all dedicated funding now? I said, well, uh, that's the way it's. It is, you know. I said, well, so I looked at the Stratford application, looked at the Stratford. Stratford had a surplus. It had a really good surplus. I looked at the million dollars and thought, oh, God, I could find some money to help new and emerging companies. Or to, so. And so I went to Stratford, met with the board, and Robin, and I said, look, you don't need the grant from the Canada Council this year. How about if we put this as the Stratford Fund, we invest this, okay? And I use the income from that million dollars to give seed money to smaller companies and that, and we'll credit that, you know, Stratford has made this possible. And then, you know, when you need the principal, it's there, we just pull it and give it to you. Great idea. <laughs> Wait a minute, says Robin. How do we know we can trust you? I said, well, <laughs> want it in writing? We'll, we'll give it to you. Uh, no, no, no. We have plans. I think I would rather have the 
Havar Grant. We lost an opportunity. Mm -hmm. We lost an opportunity. But you could also slice that way saying you're punishing a theater that does well. Yes. You know? Yeah. But you do well, we'll cut yeah. your grant. No. But well, every theater yeah. managed to go, well, we're not going to do well for the Canada <laughs> Council books no. this year. We're yeah. always going to show. I can see I mean, I'm point. being mischievous yeah. here. But yeah. Oh, no, no. Because it understand. is a fantastic idea. Yeah. I uh, said, so we're, we're not cutting your grant. The grant is right there. Right. It's safe, sound. It's, you know, right. you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you know, but uh, no, I wouldn't buy into it. We started another program, which I loved. Uh, we had this nonprofit theater going, but there was, there was just the beginning of sort of a commercial theater outside of that. And so I set up, I got a couple hundred thousand dollars, and I set up the venture capital fund. Maximum of $25,000, and we would be the first money in, because so often in projects, people say, well, who's in? You know, well, the candidate council is given us 25000 to be repaid, you mm -hmm. know, if it worked out. And uh, I had a great, I had a great advisory panel. I had Franz Kramer. I had Leon, I think, at one point, uh, Norman Jewison, Ed Cowan. We'd get together twice a year and go through the applications. There was no big forms or anything. You just had to tell us what your idea was. I think one of the first ones, Marlene Smith, I think, got it for a couple of white chicks up at the right. ports. And then she got the rights to a little play. Then the other one was these two crazy guys <laughs> who wanted to start a circus school in Montreal. <laughs> wow, the guy who went up to the space shuttle because 20, he's a billionaire now? $25,000. <laughs> they got $25,000 Wow! to start a Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> and they repaid. I think Marlene repaid, too. And I think they repaid. But... You know, that was a it was a small thing, but it was a, a yeah. good thing. And I think it lasted for a year or two after after I left. But uh, Norm Foster. Norm Foster. How did Norm Foster? I gather he entered the universe of writing Canadian plays through you. Not through me. No, no. I will give you the exact story. Norm Foster came to Fredericton. I had left, uh, just left, in fact. Norm Foster came as a morning host and a desk jockey. You know and would write little skits and say ridiculous thing. Alvin Shaw, <laughs> again, my mentor, uh, had Theatre Fredericton. It was a local community thing. And they were doing a production of Arsenic No Lace, I think it was. And Norm's friend, Spurway, was going to audition. His mother was a part of it. Spurway's mother was a part of Theatre Fredericton. I said to Norm, come along, come along, come along. So Norm went along, and he got cast as the Karloff figure in right. Arthur and Old Lace. First time he'd ever been on stage. Never been to a play, ever. So he loved this, <laughs> got involved, and, and then uh, he went to DDF, and my God, he, he won an acting award. Oh my God. But then he wrote this little one, one uh, act play called the, the, the Cabin Dwellers, Cabin Fever, and acted in it, and Alvin directed it. And then Alvin said to uh, Malcolm, got this young fellow here, you know, he he writes, and I think maybe you should pay some attention to him. So Malcolm, Malcolm, and Norm wrote this little play called Sinners. Wow. And it was produced first at TMB, and I think then the next seven yeah. were produced at TMB. Yeah. <laughs> that was the pebble that was dropped into the water in the wow. rings, sure. Went around. I think he's up to 45, 46 now. He's... He is the most produced playwright, is he not? Oh, yeah, uh, with absolutely. And I'd, I'd uh, check with the United States, too. Right. <laughs> there were like 114 productions last year. Wow. <laughs> you know, yeah. He can't help. Norm and I have done an awful lot of shows together, and we've, in fact, lived together or shared a living space when we were acting together. And uh, we have virtually the same habits. We're both up at five. He goes to the computer, and he cannot not write. He will do that from 5 o'clock in the morning until 8 or 9. He just can't not write. Jeez. I keep thinking it's like Mozart yeah. and Amadeus. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. It's not yeah. a choice. 
Well, it's just like what you do and what I do is not a choice. Cannot not. <laughs> we cannot not. Cannot not. Okay, yeah. so did we meet in 1967 in St. John's at the DDR? We had to we have. We must have. I it's must impossible have. not to. I was whatever, 17 or whatever yeah. I was at the and time. Yeah, and David Ferry, I think, was David 13 or 14. Well, yeah. all these years later. Oh, my God. And we still haven't done a show. Uh, we will. Will we? We will. Of okay, course we will. Camera. We're doing a show. <laughs> We're going to do a show together. Thanks, Walter. <laughs> my pleasure.